In this seventh episode, we discuss the rebuilding of the second temple during the Persian Empire, as well as the significance of the temple in relation to the Antichrist, including the triple six final Antichrist. A temple is a place of worship, and only one can exist in Jerusalem. Solomon built the first one, which the Babylonians destroyed in 586 BC. While in Babylon, Daniel prophesied that the Babylonians will be conquered by the Medes and Persians. Indeed, in 539 BC, the last Babylonian king Belshazzar was killed and the Persian Empire took over as the new beast of the world power. Now, in 538 BC, the Persian king Cyrus allowed 50,000 Jews to return to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. And they were led by Zerubbabel, who will turn out to be the great, 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 great grandfather of Yeshua, whom we call Christ Jesus. After Zerubbabel started the foundation, the Samaritans came and they opposed the Jews, and they managed to stop them from building the temple. Samaritans were a mixture of Jews and the people of Assyrian Empire. Remember we discussed the Assyrian Empire that came and captured the Jews in the Northern Kingdom that was also called Israel and later the Babylonians came and captured the Southern Kingdom which was called Judah where the temple was and they also destroyed it. Now the Assyrians after they've conquered the Jews they actually transported a lot of pagan nations into Samaria and they mixed with those Jews that remained there. Now many years later these mixed Samaritans in the north had to try and stop the rebuilding of the temple of true worship in the south in Jerusalem because they were not going to be allowed in. They were going to be discriminated and be excluded. Why? Because they are not real Jews. And now you will understand why even later on in Jesus' time, 400 years later, there was still a friction between the Samaritans in the north and the Jews in the south. Now back to Zerubbabel and the building of the temple. After the Samaritans, they succeeded in stopping them from rebuilding the temple. Seven years later, there was a new king called Xerxes. And now this is the first of the two Xerxes that we are going to discuss in this episode. This time the Samaritans accused the Jews and then Xerxes managed to stop the Jews from building the temple. Seven years later, in 521 BC, there was a new Persian king called Darius. Again, Samaritans, they sent a letter to him to stop the building of the temple. But then in 520 BC, Darius found records from Cyrus decreeing that the temple needs to be rebuilt. So instead, he commanded those Samaritans to go and fund the building of the temple. Glory to God. If I was a preacher right here, I was going to start saying the traps that your enemies have set before you. God is going to use them as a stepping stone and then they're going to pay for your... <laughs> you know, but I'm not trying to excite you, but instead I'm trying to build historical knowledge so we can understand the end times. The same year, God sends prophets Haggai and Zechariah who preach to the Jews, get off your beds and rebuild the temple instead of your houses so that God can bless you. In 516 BC, the temple was completed and dedicated. So a man named Yeshua was the high priest. They even had a pass over them. And now a new problem arises. Remember that only about 50,000 were released with Zerubbabel from Babylon. But there must have been millions of Jews in, in Babylon at that time. So what happened to the rest? Why did they stay? The same reasons Jews stayed in Germany after Hitler was long gone. The same reason black Americans won't return to Africa. They enjoy the Babylonian life where they are successful in their businesses and they undermine their origin. David Parson says that after Israel was restored to the Jews in 1953, Many Jews remained in Germany and they identified themselves as Germans. Hmm. The same thing here with Jews in Babylon under the Persians. After the Jews have been released, they remained there and they even identified themselves as Persians. 
so much that they even had to change their names. One of those people who changed their names is Hadassah, and you know her as Esther. Hadassah was a beautiful orphan who was adopted by her cousin named Mordecai, who probably gave her that name, Esther. And yes, you heard me right. Mordecai was not Esther's uncle. I don't know where people got this from and it has just been on rotation ever since. This is why it is important for you to read your own Bible. Esther means Easter and yes, it means Easter, meaning a star or as some call her Venus, named after that Semiramis, the pagan queen of heaven goddess we have discussed previously. So do not name your child Esther, it is a name of a demon. Adasa had to be named Esther for survival. In 486 BC, there was a new King Xerxes who was fighting against the Greeks that would become the new beast world power as prophesied by Daniel. You can watch this in movies like 300, The Rising of Empire. Xerxes was excited about his wars and made a feast which he called his wife Vashti to show off her beauty, but she refused. Xerxes chucked her off and called a beauty contest so he can get a new wife. Hadassah won that contest. She became the new queen of Persia. Now, another antichrist named Haman, the second in charge of Xerxes, accused the Jews and he got Xerxes to order a genocide to kill all the Jews in the empire in one day. This will include those who are back in Jerusalem that rebuilt the temple. But Hadassah intervened and revealed herself to be a Jew. So King Hexes stopped the genocide and later impaled Haman on a pole which Haman has created to impale Mordecai. Now right about here again, I won't be tempted to start preaching now we want. The fact is that Satan wanted the Jews extinct to prevent the coming of the Messiah, as prophesied by Daniel, the other prophets, and even God at the Garden of Eden. Satan also wanted God's temple to be destroyed or defiled so that nobody worships God. You will see that the Greek will do the same thing, and so will the Romans, and also so will the triple six antichrist. I will show you even from the Jesus prophecies that the temple is the missing tool before the coming of the triple six. Years later, in 458 BC, Esther's stepson named Artaxerxes, who was now the emperor, allowed Ezra and about 1,800 priests to go back to Jerusalem. Ezra knew and understood scriptures, so he taught the Jews the law of Moses, and he became the high priest. So Ezra was there to restore the Jewish religion. Now in the Jewish religion, Jews are not allowed to marry pagans, so Ezra even had to get them to divorce all of those pagan women that they have married. Yeah. Now 14 years after Ezra, in 444 BC, Artaxerxes again sent his cupbearer named Nehemiah to go with the craftsmen and to rebuild or to build the wall of Jerusalem. Like Ezra, Nehemiah also got people to repent, observe the Sabbath, and to shun intermarriages with pagans. Now, Jews being Jews, they went back to their old ways. At least this time they did not do idol worshipping, but they started offering some crippled animals and all this unacceptable worship. Then, 12 years after Nehemiah has returned, in 432 BC, God was fed off with the Jews and he sent the last of the prophets in the Old Testament called Malachi. He was signing off saying he will see them after Jesus' birth and if they do not change, they will perish on Christ's second coming. After Malachi, God kept quiet for about 400 years, which is missing in the Bible until Jesus came in the New Testament, Matthew or Mark. So why did I spend all this time going through Jewish history? I'm glad you asked. Many of us have been taught wrong doctrine that we have come as as Christians to replace the Jews. And God does not care about the Jewish temple because now we are the Christians, we are the new temple of God. No, 
The temple was rebuilt to restore worship and to prepare the coming of Christ the first time. But as I said, history repeats itself. Right now there's no temple because the Roman Antichrist destroyed it 2,000 years ago in 70 AD. And just as Satan did with the mixed Samaritans, he also planted Muslims with other nations in Israel to prevent the rebuilding of the temple so far. Because there has not been any temple, the Messiah will not return. There is actually even a mosque where the temple was. It's not the Dome of the Rock, which is the most prominent site. It's the Al-Aqsa Mosque. What kind of plans are being made to, to build a third temple? There are actually quite a few, and um, depending on the group that you talk to, um, different architectural designs have been made. So, The good news is that the temple is now under construction after nearly 2,000 years. The bad news is, are you ready for the coming of Christ? Or are you holding on to the false religion of iron and clay. On the next episode we will discuss the 400 years missing in the Bible and the Greek activities at the temple which will be repeated by the triple six antichrist as Jesus and Paul have prophesied. This is why the temple is key to interpretation of the end times. Right now I believe God is sending the Ezra's, Nehemiah's, the Haggai's and all the other prophets to rebuild the true religion and the temple which is the church of God and to get you of Babylon and its iron and clay religion of Christmas and Easter and all these prosperity gospels and, and all of this nonsense that have infiltrated into the church. And this is to prepare us for the coming of Yeshua, the Christ, the Messiah, the seed of Eve. Have a lovely day.